Happy day, New Thought community, friends, and family. I am Reverend Krista Erickson, and I am just thrilled to be your speaker this week. It is such a magical time of year and one of my favorite times of year. There's a lot going on right now. Um, tomorrow marks the winter solstice, which even though it's the longest and darkest day of the year, it's actually celebrated because it marks the return of the sun. Plus, tomorrow we get to witness a once every 800 year or so planetary alignment, and it's Christmas week. And that planetary alignment is being compared to the Christmas star that led the wise men to the birth of Christ. And that is just one of many ways that the return of the sun is being celebrated by lights. And when I say sun, I mean both sun, S-U-N, and sun, S-O-N, as in the son of God, which we recognize as the Christ consciousness within us all. And there are so many other cultures and religions across the world that will be celebrating light in this period of darkness. You know, Advent candles are lit as recognition that the light of God has come into the world through the birth of Christ. Um, Hanukkah, the festival of lights, has eight nights of lighting candles. Kwanzaa has seven nights. Uh, Shabiyalda, the night of birth, has um, bonfires that are lit until the arrival of dawn. Yule is celebrated by hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Um, there's Inti Rimi and so, so, so many more celebrations. But what they all have in common is that they are welcoming the return of light, the return of the sun. Which brings me to my topic, guiding light. But I'm not talking about the candles, fires, or the string lights that many are celebrating with, although I do love those. But I'm going to be talking about our inner light, that spark of divine creation that is within each of us and can guide our way through life if we take a moment to recognize its presence. You know, it's easy um, for, for most of us to recognize that there is one singular presence behind, well, behind all that is that there's one divine being, one God. And in fact, it's the very first step in our spiritual mind treatment, the recognition that there is one God and that that God is all things. The second step is the unification of the self with the one divine presence. Because if there is just one God who creates, then you are a walking, talking expression of that divine light. Because who else could have created you if there is only one? Which means that you are of God, just as everyone around you is of God. The spark of the divine is within each of us. And that light is always there. It cannot leave. It never burns out. We do not need to ask for it or to seek it out. And it is, it is our birthright bestowed upon us by God because we are of God. So why is it so easy to forget that? I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I know it's been a rough year for a lot of people and um, there seems to be a lot of negativity going around, right? And what I've come to realize, at least for myself, is that I think it happens, we forget about our divine presence within because it's just way easier being a victim of circumstance rather than having faith in oneself. And this year in particular has been so extremely hard, but that doesn't mean that God has left. It doesn't matter how angry, depressed, isolated, or frustrated you feel. The light of God is always within you. You can't get rid of it if you tried. It's like white on rice, you're stuck with it. And I mean, how fortunate is that? Could you imagine if you could just like throw God away when you were mad? I mean, how horrible would that be? Even in your darkest moments, when you think that there is nothing left to give, God still resides within you. You just have to have faith. So I'm going to read from my favorite book, The Science of Mind. Um, this is in the chapter Faith in the subsection available to all. And Ernest Holmes writes, since faith is a quality unconfined to age or station, it may be ours today as much as it has been any man's at any time. 
We are not going through a harder time today, a longer or darker night than has ever been experienced before. That's reassuring. It only seems darker because we have lost faith, the beacon of light. If one will have faith in himself, faith in his fellow man, in the universe and in God, that faith will light the place in which he finds himself. And by the light of this faith, he will be able to see that all is good. And the light shed by this faith will light the way for others. We become conscious of darkness only when we are without faith, for faith is ever the light of our day and the light on our way. Making that way clearly visible to us, even when to all others, it may be beset with obstacles and the ongoing rough. Poet he was. In order to have faith, we must have a conviction that all is well. In order to keep faith, we must allow nothing to enter our thought which will weaken this conviction. Faith is built up from belief, acceptance, and trust. Whenever anything enters our thought which destroys in any degree one of these attitudes, to that extent our faith is weakened. Our mind must be steady in the conviction that our life is in some part of God and that the Spirit is incarnated in us. That's, uh, that's powerful. This idea that faith is all we need to recognize the divine light within. That the key to rediscovering your inner guiding light is to question the beliefs that are weakening your faith. And we have to remember that all of our thoughts, all of our feelings, even our circumstances are only temporary. They do not rule us unless we allow them to. You always have the ability to choose better. You know, when I find that I have forgotten the, the presence of the divine within, it's usually because I've succumbed to self-pity or some other negative emotion. But you know what? Sometimes it feels good to be mad. You know, it can make you feel powerful. In fact, a lot of good in the world has come from really pissed off people. And sometimes it feels good to be hurt because as a victim, you get to be the one cared for. People feel sorry for you and commiserate with you and you get to be the center of attention. You know, so sometimes these negative feelings feel good, right? Until they don't. Because I guarantee you that over time, they will take a toll on you. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Spiritually, because that's when you know that you have forgotten your divine birthright. And that birthright is that there is divine light already and always within you. And if you allow it, if you allow it, it will guide your way out of whatever darkness you face. So celebrate the return of the sun with your candles, your fires, the lights in the trees, but also remember that you too are a light, the most important light, because you are a light of God. And if you're in a place that you can't recognize that, that's okay. You know, I think at some point or another, we've all been there. But if you can't recognize your light within, then gather around those who can. You know, an NTC is a magnificent source of light seers. Like we are trained to see the God in you. Like intense training, six years of intense training, <laughs> specifically to teach us to see God in everything, in everyone, to see God in you, even when you can't see it for yourself. So call one of your ministers today if you cannot find your light or send in a treatment request and we will know for you that you are the light of God and that whatever darkness you face, your inner light will guide you through. Have faith in yourself, have faith in the love of the divine, and know that light will always lead the way. Just keep thinking. Mm, no, okay. 
I was going to bust out in a song really fast, but I will spare you from suffering my singing voice. But just think of the song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Going to Let It Shine. Um, this Little Light of Mine, I'm Going to Let It Shine. I know you know the song. So don't you dare hide your light under a bushel. Continue to let it shine. Find it. Shine it bright today and every day. All right, you guys, happy holidays, everyone. All of my love, all of my blessings to you today and always. Amen.